All right, so in the previous video, we saw how uh, the basic ocean was set up, which was just a fairly, you know, basic thing. And uh, now let's take a look at how to build the actual shader in Octane. So what I have to start off with is, uh, this is my basic scene, okay? And I have like a fair bit of depth of field. So let me just get rid of that. Yeah, so this is my, you know, absolute basic scene. And uh, materials wise, I have like a few materials which have been assigned to the teapot. They're just basic glossy shaders. Uh, this is my original ocean shader, but I'll build a new one. So I have assigned like a new ocean material, which is just a single universal material. And my render settings are fairly basic. So I have a, a texture image, which is connected to the environment. I haven't taken a texture as yet. Uh, my imager is currently default, which should be at sRGB. And in path tracing, uh, I am at a thousand samples. Diffuse depth is uh, is three. You can, I think, you can keep it at two. Specular depth is seven, but we can adjust that as well. So nothing like nothing really fancy. Okay. So the first thing to remember is if you're doing uh, water or metal or anything, you should have a good reflection map. Uh, let me just get this to about 25. I think that was a good frame to be at. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the first thing as I said is you need a good HDR. And what I did is you can find a very good HDR at this website called HDRI Haven, which has free HDRs. So I'll put this link in the description because you might as well download from the actual site. Uh, so yeah, so this is like a really nice uh, sunrise setup. And uh, you get like a whole bunch of resolutions. You can go all the way up to 16K. And you also get some very nice, uh, you know, background maps. So if you want like backplates, then you can use these. But anyways, like we just need the HDR. And the one thing to remember is it's, it's a fairly bright HDR. Like the sun especially is very bright. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the uh, texture gamma is at one. Okay, otherwise it's just going to burn out completely. Okay, so I can just click here and I believe I have it here. Yeah. And so if I hit IPR, I should get to see. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just sort of rotate it around. So it's coming from that direction. Like right now it's from here. So just sort of spin it till you can see it from. Yeah, this is good. Okay. And I also want to just up the saturation a little bit. So it's a little more colorful. Okay. Okay. So the basic ocean shader is fairly, you know, simple to set up. Uh, if I just take the albedo and make it black, you'll get, you know, the basic look to begin with. And let me just adjust it a little more because the I'm just, I want the sunlight to come here. Just, you know, adjust it till you get the sunlight there. Yeah. I think this is good. Yeah. Perfect. We're getting some nice, you know, highlights on the ocean, which is why I said like you need to have a good HDR. Okay, like if you don't have a good HDR, it's going to look like crap. Don't use the the daylight setup. It looks okay, but you don't get these nice, you know, bright highlights. So it's good to have like a nice reflection map. Okay, so uh, let me just get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take like an RGB, like a color RGB and connect it to transmission. So it becomes transparent and make sure that you turn on fake shadows. So if you turn on fake shadows, you'll get your, you know, basic transparent ocean. Okay. So the first step, let me just check my uh, specular depth. So yeah, so if you get it down to about like two, it's okay, but you get to see a little bit of these black spaces. So I think let's try. Yeah. Three is good enough. Because the thing is, there isn't really a lot for it to reflect or refract, right? Like it's just one plane and there's another plane below it. So you don't need, uh, you don't need a lot of uh, diffuse depth or specular depth because it just, you're unnecessarily wasting uh, time. Like your render time will increase for no particular reason for almost zero visual difference. Okay. So if we come to the ocean, the second thing is we need absorption. Okay. So just take an absorption medium connected to medium and you'll immediately go black. Okay. So what you want to do is take the absorption color to something like, uh, 
something like a light blue or a bluish green. So you can start seeing the color in there and like lower the density. Yeah, and just push it a little more towards green. Yeah, I think this is good. So let's just, let's see if we can go a little higher. Yeah, now here's the thing, right? So this is where, yeah. So here's the thing, right? So this is where having that ground plane below the, below the ocean really helps out. Because if you don't have that, like if I hide it and I did a, do a reload, you'll see it just like either it becomes completely transparent. Okay. Because there's like a HDR below it. So it just looks weird. So that helps, you know, in that, in that one way. Also, the other way it helps is if I get it closer or further away, you can actually control the, you know, the darkness in the ocean. See, so if it's, if the lower it goes, you know, the darker the ocean gets. Let me just increase the size of this. And the higher it comes up, the lighter you can get your ocean to be. See, so where it is getting really close to the ground plane, it's really light. See, like these areas, it is really light. Okay, and then wherever it has the peaks, it gets darker. So you can control like the depth of the ocean in this way. The other thing you can also do is if you take the material of the floor and you give that some color, you can additionally color the ocean. So if I make this reddish, or if I make it like pink, so you can see that color sort of bleeding into the ocean. So it gives you like an additional control. So if you want it to be like more greenish, so you can like, so it gives you like a little bit more of an artistic control on what the ocean is supposed to look like. It's not realistic, but you know, who cares? So we'll just adjust the depth. Okay, so the other thing you want or the other thing I want to do with this is we want to generate uh, white caps. And the way we can do that is let me just get rid of these two temporarily. And I'm going to get the albedo back to one. Okay. And temporarily I'm going to get rid of the specular. So I just have like the default color. Start off with a dirt texture. So I'm going to take the dirt and connect it to albedo and invert normals. There you go. You, know, you get like really nice peaks. You can increase the detail and increase the tolerance so that we get rid of the really small details. Okay, like if you if it's zero, you'll see you're picking up a lot of small details. We don't want that. And you can also lower the radius. So now take a gradient or actually you'll need two of them. One to control the diffuse color and one to control the transmission color. So we'll plug this into diffuse. And this, the white area should be black. And this should be like a light green. And you can just take like another black and just push it in really close. So we just, we don't want like too much of it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think this is good enough. Okay. And then we'll take another, let me connect the absorption back. So we can just, it brings in everything. And then we'll take another gradient and plug this in, connect it to transmission. And yeah, this is mostly good. So what we want is wherever, uh, like wherever the diffuse color is black, this should be white. Okay. And wherever the peaks are, that should be black. And let's just sort of push it in. We can make this slightly gray, make it slightly darker. So it's sort of like, you know, we don't want it to be too bright. Yeah, and then bring the specular back. See, so you get like these nice little, you know, white caps on the ocean waves. So if you just like animate through it, you'll get, and the nice thing is because it's a dirt map, it, it automatically interacts with the ocean and you get like this nice little, you know, white foam look around uh, the teapot as well. So that you get that automatically. Yeah, so there you go. So this is essentially how you build up the ocean shingle. And then you can use a little bit of the bloom and glare because it's nice to get like a little bit of a glint off this. 
you know so i can just take the post processing and turn it on and i'm just going to take up the glare yeah so you get like these nice little and you can adjust the gamma a little bit yeah so you're just sort of like getting you know bright spots over there let me just jump this up a little more and we can adjust the saturation perfect so you get like it's about like the ocean geometry is uh, i think a million plus like it's high but it's not too high hold on let me just check no it's about 500000 so it's not like crazy high or anything like that but if you want like what you can also do is you can uh, you can also export the displacement map okay so whatever displays this is generating you can actually come to export to texture and you can actually export the displacement map so that will so if you want to take it to another software you know you can take it to another software and if you're using octane the settings remain the same like use the new universal material because it gives you you know all the options in one place if you use uh, if you if you're using like the specular material then you'll have to blend the specular and the glossiness and a glossy material using the dirt map through like a mix material so the work becomes bigger so if you are in octane 4 then the universal material sort of really helps okay and yeah my my depth of field was pretty low because i wanted to you know i think i was at like 0.5 or something so you get like nice little you know bokeh on the whole thing it looks nice but anyways that's basically it so this is as far as uh, building an ocean shader is concerned the the darkness of this depends completely on you like how dark you want the ocean to be that uh, you know you can adjust automatically like that is just you just increase the density of it and you can you know get it to be darker see there you go okay so if you up the density you can still get a little bit of color variation so yeah so this is at 2 and then this is at 8 so you just pick you know whichever one you think looks nice so if you're doing like shallower waves closer to the beach then you keep a lower density if you're keeping uh, you know if you're just doing like deep ocean with like a giant boat or something then you keep the density relatively higher so yeah so this is basically it so uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding this or any questions in general about about houdini or octane or whatever then uh, you can ask me in the comments or uh, you can write me an email or you can ask me on twitter you know whatever is preferable and i'll try my best to answer so once again i hope the tutorial was useful and that's basically it